Whiskey Factory. We uh, are cultivators up in Mendocino, California. We uh, have a 200 acre farm up here where we grow uh, full spectrum indoor uh, and we also do light depth and some outdoor. Uh, we uh, have been doing this in the cannabis industry for 20 plus years of growing. Uh, we've had pharmacy factory for roughly about three years, four years. Yeah, you know, four years. Um, it actually, we were down in the shop one day. Um, we were working on um, some of that equipment that you guys saw earlier that we were designing for um, pressing rosin. Um, it was during that time, me and Mark have always gone through a lot of, um, I guess, figuring out processes and designing equipment to make things more efficient and easier. Um, we had been working on that project and we were deciding that we were going to um, start with a, a formal name for what we had always been doing and start marketing that and trying to bring that into the industry. This was prior to REC passing um, and it was still up in our neck of the woods. It was still the 9.31, right? Yeah, it was collectives and co-ops yep. and having a non-profit. Yep. Yeah, and we were in the shop and we're doing, we're creating all these presses and whatnot and we were always building stuff and so we figured out, you know, we're a factory in some sort of making these presses and then when we're coming down to it it's you know being farmers creating cannabis we like the you know the what's that double entendre well yeah we had kicked around um, the actual name of a prior motorcycle shop that I worked for when I was uh, really young 18 and how they had played off of uh, the words of surgical steeds and um, that was a play off of the medical sense of Altering a motorcycle um, is why they called it surgical steeds. Uh, the steed being the motorcycle, the stud horse, and the surgically removing parts from it and changing that. And so then that conversation had come up and then kicked into uh, yeah. what Mark was yeah. saying. Farming and pharmacy. So yeah. Pharmacy factory. We create yeah. high end cannabis medically and now recreation. We actually do a combination of everything that you just talked about. Um, we do what we consider full spectrum indoor. Um, in that, I think me and Mark had uh, we done indoor, soul indoor for a long time. Um, hydro, a lot of different techniques on growing. Um, in that, when we decided to uh, launch the brand and actually kind of move forward with what we were trying to do. Um, we had worked on deciding what was the environment that we wanted. Yeah, for efficiency and for you know creating cannabis at the at the the best price, but also the most quality. We realized like you can create as much or more with using less wattage in, in electricity and actually get a similar or even we think better product because we actually we call it full spectrum indoor because the sun touches it all year long and get the full spectrum of the sun. So we have lighting. We have CO2, we're fully sealed, we control the environment, but then we also uh, we also have that ability to have the sun kiss our, our plants the whole time. So I feel we do, it gives a little bit higher yeah, energy. That dynamic the energy that the sun produces, um, you can't mimic in a true 100% indoor artificial environment with artificial lighting. And so, you know, with the engineering background and designing what we were going to cultivate, uh, what we figured the best product that you could do in mixing, like Mark said, the efficiency of watts per square foot on what you're actually using, what the carbon footprint of a farm could be, how we can move that forward in a very efficient way, um, led us to what we consider the best technique is full spectrum indoor. And that dynamic intensity that you get from the sun mixed with the artificial light, controlled environment, uh, being able to control day, night, real quickly, um, gives you that different node structure and the setup structure that happens on a plant um, when cultivating in those type of environments and so um, that and temperature control yeah. nighttime temperature how we manipulate the light throughout the whole cycles it all comes into play of why our pot can look a little bit different than just indoor and different than like say light depth or outdoor yeah and so we do that we do the full spectrum indoor and then we do do some outdoor because we've always had plants outside and um, we do love outdoor pot and then Depths, which is, you know, depths are, are equivalent to 
uh, just a controlled light cycle of outdoor, slightly different uh, atmosphere, slightly different environment than a true outdoor, but very close. You're mainly just controlling the, the light cycle to get that quality of pot. Kind of in the middle. Uh, we, we don't focus on large batches, but we also don't do tiny batches. We try to run roughly about 20 pounds of each strain. Uh, that we feel is a couple batch tests worth of, of cannabis. Uh, yeah, it, the five and tens, it, it's, it gets a little tricky because of costing of batch testing, but it seems like 20 pounds is about right of each strain. Uh, we produce a couple different specialty strains. We have our old go-to is the Daymaker Diesel. It's a, you know, it's a cut our crews had since the early 2000s. We had, we picked it up in about 2008 or so, and we've been uh, cultivating it up here on this property since then. It's a cut that came from a buddy of ours. Um, <clears throat> it, long time diesel headband type genetics that are not mixed with any new stuff whatsoever. We know it's pure and old and, and good. Uh, we love that strain. And then we also cracked a bunch of Max seeds last year that my buddy gave me from Palhana down in San Diego through Honeysuckle Lotus. And they <clears throat> they actually came out phenomenally. We had a couple of amazing flavors in those phenotypes that we found that natural cannabis is carrying. Uh, the Mac 3 just got, uh, by Cannabis Now, the best new Mac strain of this last Hall of Flowers. So we feel that those are super unique and very popular right now. We also have the Runts, which is a new popular strain from the Bay Area. And we have uh, gelatos. We have uh, a strain that we used to grow back in the late 90s called corn, which is I'm one of my favorite strains I've ever smoked in my life. And we just got that cut back from uh, a buddy of ours up in Humboldt, CSI Humboldt. Um, and he, uh, we're pretty excited to have that cut back because it's a super skunk, Midwest skunk type strain. It's not a pure super skunk, but it's just. Very unique. Hopefully, yeah, we're gonna enter that in a couple. Brings of you back to the '90s. Brings right you back to the '90s right away. So yeah, we have a that, bunch of cool stuff. And Orange Phoenix. And then our Orange Phoenix, of course, is is really popular, and it's the most amazing orange type terpene we've ever come across. So really proud of that. It's a seed that we cracked along maybe four years ago, yeah. and it's a it's our go-to. It, yeah, we lucked out on that finding uh, a plant that had the terpene profile that was so unique and had such a unique flavor um, that always stands out like no matter no matter what it cuts through everything else even if you're in a room or like at, at the Emerald Cup where everybody's smoking a million different strains it just it cuts through everything it's 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 very unique and so um, it's a it's a fun one yeah those are kind of our go-to's right now we have a do si -Do that just tested it 32% that you guys are carrying at natural cannabis, 38 almost percent cannabinoids, and that's just unheard of. And so that's like, you know, that's a very powerful, potent uh, cannabis strain. We, we also, a buddy of ours, uh, cracked that, that seed, and he, uh, he well, doing the Mendocino fire. Yeah, long story on that guy. You guys want to hear it real quick? Yeah. So we were, uh, my buddy Judd had a garden down in Redwood Valley. Um, him and my boy John had a garden, and he had planted about nine different docido -si -do in that garden, and um, amongst hundreds of different yeah. seed plants that he has gathered over the years. He's a seed collector, and so he had all these strains. And so he invited me over there to come over and look through them all and take anything that I thought was interesting. So we looked through all these different plants, and um, I took a couple docido. -si -do, I took some. A bunch of per, uh, uh, perp strain, uh, uh, what was it, a uh, uh, maple leaf indica mm -hmm. by Mendocino mm -hmm. Purple, um, or actually Mendocino Purple by Maple Leaf Indica. But all these great strains, so I go through and I take these dosi -si -do cuts and we get them all back up here and within, you know, a month from that point the fire comes through in Redwood Valley and just decimates the garden. Everything yeah, is pretty much burnt everything. and just destroyed. And, so this cut actually made it and it lived up here and it's really the only thing left of that particular pheno of that do -si -do. And it, it tests incredibly high. It's way more face off OG leaning, but it, it's a very, very potent strain and it's a, it's a good one. So those are kind of our, 
And then we take some of our strains, like in our concentrates, and we mix them. So we'll take like an orange phoenix, we'll take 10% of our orange phoenix and 90% of our do -si dough, we'll put it in the column when they're actually doing the, the uh, blast of the, of the hydrocarbon and we'll blast it and then the, the, the concentrate that comes out has like a slight orange phoenix flavor but it's 90% do -si dough. So that's how we make our melange line of concentrates is we actually blast them all together in the column as flour and then, and then it comes out with like a, a it's like wine, it's kind of like a wine. Yeah, blend. blend. Yeah. Soil? Yep, soil, all soil based. Um, we amend basically a lot of minerals. Uh, we use a lot of stuff out of the ocean. Um, and then it's always the right timing mixed with the right watering schedule. And then our one of our big practices is using like a Pure Crop One, which is one of the most amazing products we found out there right now for controlling any type of mite, any type of powder mold, uh, any type of botrytis, any type of that type of stuff. Um, it does an incredible job of keeping all those pathogens off your plants. And so we really recommend that in a, in a spray schedule. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, just being on it, making sure that you're continually doing foliar sprays to get keep pests down and keep pests away uh, we you know we've never failed a flower test because we we take good care of the soil and we take good care of the, the canopy and in turn it usually comes out and then curing the pro the, the product and I think there's a lot that goes into um, after the cloning phase and you first get your first roots and that plant goes into a cube and you start growing in the, the small section of Everybody sees a plant differently and, and the node structure and the structure on the plant and where they're trying to take the structure of that plant to to end up with the canopy that you have. Um, and I think that's something that we, uh, with at least the amount of time we've been cultivating and the way me and my brother see the plant, um, I think that's one uh, advantage we have over trying to turn a plant into something that can yield and actually make the farm money um, is how you see the plant and and it's tricky to get people to when I say that to recognize the differences and actually what you're looking at when you look at the plant and what those different structures are and how you move that plant into the structure you're looking for to ask it then to flower and produce you a product that you're gonna harvest um, and I think with as much time as we've had under our belt and how we see that plant and then that feeling for that plant and bringing it into through the vegetation stage and into flowering is um, is something that's hard it takes a lot of time just practice and practice and um feeling the plant out yeah because uh Matt's making mistakes yeah it takes a ton of mistakes that you make over the years well, just, and then you see and start to recognize those little things or those little characteristics that you like if it was a mistake that you're trying to steer the plant away from or if it was an environmental mistake um, that you're trying to not recreate or if it was a timing mistake uh, mix, mixed with environment cold uh, stress on the plant what you're asking the plant to do at that particular moment and when you ask the plant to actually flower and ask it to produce uh, the, the hormones, yeah, yeah the and the product that you're looking for. And so you're yeah. trying to you're trying to tell this plant change your structure and become a new plant in the middle of its process, right. you know. And so there's how, a lot to that. There's timing. a lot to do that, and, yeah. and to do it correctly to get the right stackage. Yeah, and, yeah. and don't overfeed. That's one of my biggest tips: is don't overfeed your plants. Yeah. Like plants don't need 1500 ppm, 2000 ppm. I guess if you're in a full indoor, you can. Put that in them and they you just want that real stacky look then and they can accept it then i'm not saying don't do it but it's regards, a real tricky environment that a plant can take 2000 yeah. ppm yeah or 1500 ppm yeah and so it always relates back to that um you've got to feed your plants according to timing environment and what they're going to see for the that day and the following few days and you have to adjust and know how to address that situation so um, that that is the trickiness to growing this plant that we do and that's why um, it's not uh, it's 
it's not just a super simple thing that we could sit there and say, here's a recipe, go mimic it. Because there's a lot, of, there's so many factors that boil into that recipe. Timing a year. Yeah. Like some year, if it's super hot out, you're trying yeah. to cool. Is rain coming? Is frost coming? Is all of those things. There's so many things. So you're constantly, one thing we know um, with our microclimate, which we have a very favorable microclimate on our ranch, but we've grown here long enough to be in tune enough with that microclimate to then understand what are the right times to ask your plant to do certain things and when you should ask it to flip or flower and what you should be feeding it at those moments um, to get the product that we do get out of the plant. Just that it's, uh, it's not a simple process. It's a process that takes um, a lot of energy and you always have to be in it the whole time. And when, what I mean by that is uh, when you're taking a plant to harvest, it's going to be 70, 60, 50, 70 days out from when you're actually harvesting it. But then that plant you started 35 days prior to that, um, you got to be thinking so far ahead of environment, seasons, all these different things coming down the road so that some of that stuff we touched on before so that how you look at the plant, how you see the plant, how you want the plant to end up is uh, dictated way before the plant's ever going to show you um, what it's trying to do. And so you just have to be very in it the whole time yeah. to get it there. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not a cakewalk business as you guys know. There's very few people, very few people of all are like we said this last year same interview there's so many of our friends that are now at this point not in it at all uh -huh. and they were trying hard a year ago when we had this interview they were trying hard to maintain and be in it and now they're not at all yeah. it's not so. easy to pull top-notch cannabis every 70 days and compete with Santa Barbara who has forever acres of cannabis it's you know it's a, it's a tricky deal one thing we've done great is for decades we've pulled a harvest every 70 days, period. Never missed one, never not been in it. And so, um, we're used to having to pull cannabis every 70 days. Make sure cannabis performs, make sure it comes out, make sure you can get a yield, you can make enough profit off of that yield to sustain your farm and move forward into the next phase of doing that. We've been doing that consecutively for decades no matter what. And I know a lot of people who have grown a lot of pot but don't pull weed no matter what every 70 days. They just, it takes structure, it takes planning, it takes a lot of things and you... Less vacations. Yep. <laughs> than we used to get. But you gotta stay, you gotta stay so regimented to that to be thinking that you're always 90 days out on something that has to happen or this has to happen or clones got to be cut or genetics got to be made or you want have to be planted exactly you know hunts have to go down yeah all that stuff stay ahead of the game yeah microclimate is pretty much what i think our makes our farm the most special i agree is our appellation in mendocino county the water comes the water. from our ranch yeah the, the air yeah the particular air we have in the microclimate we sit in um, for instance, uh, this whole section of uh, Laytonville, Willits, Covalo, a majority of Mendocino County, I'm sure Humboldt went through the same thing. Um, Oregon. We, yeah, we had a hard frost this year. It came in early. Um, it was super tricky. A lot of people weren't prepped and ready for it. Um, farming is not forgiving. So if the environment comes in and can affect your plants, you're not getting it back, it's done. It's a, that's a done deal. And so that's part of that planning and nonstop intensity that you always have to have. Um, it's no different than raising a child. And you always gotta be in it because if you're not, the particular item you're growing will die or it will have a problem or it's gonna massively affect your yield. Um, our microclimate here has always been super forgiving. It's our, it's our altitude. Um, that we don't grow on real low lining areas where a lot of the cold weather gets pushed to. We're just far enough off the ocean not to see the fog bank, 
but I would say we still get benefits from the ocean air. Yeah, cool breeze. Not, yeah, cool breeze to micronutrients to all sorts of things that were just inside that you're going to get from the ocean. You're still going to your plants are still going to see it without some of the the downfalls that you would get if you were in non-stop fog right off the ocean. And so um, all those aspects play heavily into favoring why we can consistently have a great product. Long Valley Appalachian. Yep. Um, I guess involvement in the cannabis community has only been more and more. Uh, me and Mark have had to, uh, I guess, get a little more political than we were used to being in our past. We have to go to city council meetings. We have to actually push and help um, <coughs> help the direction of the county ordinances and the way the laws are going and how to protect our farm and our rights and how to expand and how to do things so that we can build our business the way we need to do it and we found that you can't be super passive um, in that area and so that's driven us to have to be more involved in the um, yeah, organizations such as like the Mendocino Cannabis Alliance mm -hmm. things like that being involved in these uh, meetings, these action meetings that are happening around, um, going to different, <clears throat> you know, talking, also just talking to other farmers, and, and a lot of people have questions on how we're doing things, because mm -hmm. it seems like we're getting traction, mm -hmm. um, and so people have questions, how, how is that happening, right. being small and just a family farm, and so, you know, just trying to talk to people and be real with people and be honest. Maybe get them to see things from a little different angle. Yeah. Maybe not be such a farmer all the time and try to be more a business farmer. Because it's important. If you go to the Midwest, they're not just farmers. Those guys are you gotta be very a smart, yeah. very, very well equipped humans, you know? And you have to be that way nowadays. You have to be you have to be so rounded. If you're gonna try I mean, or you're or you're just gonna be a bulk farmer and you're not, you're not gonna build a brand and you're you're just gonna hopefully get some distributors or whatnot to come to your farm and buy all your product and you don't have a lot of say in your future if that's the way you want to go, but you uh, it's but definitely we're a lifestyle feasible. brand. I yeah, mean, yeah. we're a lifestyle brand based around cannabis and craft cannabis cultivation. Yeah, yeah and building cool stuff, you know, yeah. building cool motorcycles, and building cool presses, and building cool hash making equipment, and, and building cool greenhouses and houses. And, you know, we like to build stuff, and then we also always smoke cannabis so it's a yeah. lifestyle that's what yeah. it is it's not yeah. building it that's what it is we like to say um, cannabis has been a staple in our diet since we were real young um, I started smoking at 14 which is whether you want to say that's right wrong whatever I've smoked pot every day since I was 14 years old um, it has been a staple in my creative mindset and how I go about things um, whether we were building a motorcycle and coming up with different angles to think about it. Um, we have three U.S. patents in the motorcycle industry because of thinking about things and coming up with concepts on how to improve on those, or maybe creating a concept that has never been created on how to improve on a certain function. Um, all those things, in my mind, were always backed by a staple use that cannabis was always a, a part of our life and that's why we always believed in it in the 90s you never would have guessed you, we hoped that you could go forward and buy legal cannabis like it is but at that point you know coming off of the reagan era it was like a dream it wasn't a reality it wasn't you know mark did his thesis in high school on hemp and production of hemp and how much that plant can help the world and at that point it's like come on you kids like what are you guys thinking but it's that mindset that dream that drive that has brought all of us to this point um, not only from, from us but, but from other people that loved cannabis the other, other people that believed in the plant um, and we always believed in the plant and what it could do it and as always uh, smoking the plant and always being a staple in our diet it has led to all our discoveries and all it's everything been it's it, been a sure. part of it for sure yeah. i mean i can't say that someone else by smoking 
would have came up with the same stuff, but for me and what it does for my body and how my mind works, it's always been um, something that helped me tremendously. And so in that, we look at things and go about things in ways to try to uh, progress things forward, to try to be uh, innovative, to try to uh, come up with new concepts, new directions, uh, new ways of doing things, um, new ways to see the plant, and new ways to uh, turn that plant into um, different products that can benefit everybody. Yeah, the planet. I think farmers need to have a better outlet to retail. I think there's a big, there's a big, I know you guys are retail, <laughs> but for, for a lot of farms, you guys do amazingly well, but it's hard in the state to get on a shelf and to, to be, you're, we're competing with such big mass corporations now, such big money. And I'll say that's one And they of can the... lose money for years and be okay. Yeah. And, that, and it's, so it's hard to compete with that when, you're, when you have to cash flow every month. Yeah, and, and so, that's, that's been one of the best things between our relationship with natural cannabis, I think since the first time we actually you guys came in very and met first with Mamie, retail, um, and so uh, you guys, it's it's uh, you guys do a great job uh, trying to bring in true craft craft cannabis to the store, and you guys do things like this. You do farm tours. You guys try to um, bring the reality of our lifestyle, yeah, into, into your, what you're doing. Your model. Yeah, exactly, and and. I think for a whole across the state, we don't see that at all, uh, right. like at all. And so um, that you know, you guys are leading the way. I think it needs to go. Um, I do, or will say, I've felt at least in the last six months or so. I think the public is actually finally not so enamored with corporate cannabis because I felt like right out of the gate, everybody was super enamored with corporate cannabis. Well, they just didn't maybe know. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, but they're finally actually... Maybe doing more brand research. Yeah, they're finally coming back around to realize that what we're talking about here, what the farmer does on his farm and trying to create cannabis, is really where they got to look for to get... Um, Differentiate themselves in their yeah. shelf space. Yeah, exactly. And the product that they're smoking and what they're getting because it really does boil down to... Uh, People like us, um, small farms that are in the Emerald Triangle all over the state. But the reason we'll always go back to the Emerald Triangle is the reason uh, this area is famous is because of our environment. It's because it's very favorable to grow the particular crop we're growing. And so um, that's why you get a lot of good quality product that comes. Sponsor a party in Vegas. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll pass the mail along to <laughs> um, I think you guys do you more. Guys you guys, doing, I mean, yeah. look, at, we have we have our, you know, uh, one of our art pieces in your guys' showroom. Like, for us, that's huge. Like, that is so huge. Like, I love that type of art. For sure, and you guys try to educate the people working under your umbrella about the farms that you go see. You try to educate the people in there to then get it out to the public because there is a it's hard to educate the public it's hard to get the public to understand the difference between our particular product and maybe something you get out of the yeah, Central Valley. The only way we can do Southern it is your, your guys's team and your bud tenders right. is what differentiates our product. Right. You know, that's it. Like